For the past years, the world, including Africa, has been in shock by the high rate of wars taking place that have left people homeless and children orphans. Today we bring to you the World Peace Summit from Pretoria, South Africa, an initiative by the Heavenly Culture, World Peace and Restoration of Light Group. The World Peace Summit this year started with excitement at the Oartambo International Airport as the youth from all corners of South Africa came to meet and welcome Chairman of the Heavenly Culture, World Peace, Restoration of Light Men Healy, and Chairwoman of the International Women's Group Nam Hee Kim to South Africa for the second annual summit. Youth from different backgrounds and cultures cheered the chairman as he made his way to address the press concerning his visit. Commonly known as the messenger of peace, the 87-year-old man has gone around the world 17 times preaching about the importance of peace. In the first press conference that he held, Chairman Lee continued to preach about peace, stating that he believes that when there is a war in a country, the youth are normally sacrificed by either being killed or turned into soldiers. This is why in his work of peace, the youth and religious leaders are always at the forefront of his teachings. And when I meet the heads of state, I speak about many things with them. I told them, if you really love your people, if you really love your nation, that war, war must cease. Chairman Lee, as well as Chairwoman Kim, used the conference as an opportunity to call upon all the youth in the world, as well as religious leaders from different religious backgrounds, to come together, despite their differences, for the attainment of world peace and cessation of wars. As I walked with him, I walked with Chairman Lee and experienced uh, the work that he's been doing, I am sure, and there's not a doubt, that the work that he's doing, that he has the clear answer for world peace and for the cessation of war. After the break, we go to the Royal Bafuking for the Maiden Peace Monument in Africa. On day two of their visit, the chairman and chairwoman made their way to the Royal Bafuking, where they officiate the first peace monument to be placed in Africa. Peace. We are here peace. at the Lebanon peace. College where the commemoration of the Royal Bafuking peace. peace Festival is taking place. This day marks a day of peace for the people of the Bafuking region.
The duo are met with a peace festival celebration as the youth sing and dance and also perform martial arts as well as body sanctioning as a celebration of having the messenger of peace in their land. We are all one through peace. It is the responsibility of the youth to hold the torch of peace to the next generations to come. Because you are the hope of the new future. And I know that your performance today will not just be enjoyed by the people who are in attendance here, but by the whole entire world. Thank you to all the people who performed today. Thank you once again for the wonderful performance. I am truly touched by your beautiful performance today. You have shown everybody here today what transcending boundaries of race and religion is about because through peace we have become one family. You just heard uh, previously the words of Mr. Man Hee Lee and what I would like to say is all his efforts, all his struggle, what he's fight for is for the, the betterment of you, for, for the peace that you are supposed to achieve. And many youth across the world have acclaimed him to be a father of peace. So with the example of Mr. Lee that he has set for us here today, let us all become representatives of peace and let this message flow throughout the world. Thank you very much. March 28 is declared World Peace Day for Royal Buffer Game. The youth and elders of the village sign an agreement stating that they will live together in peace despite their backgrounds or their cultures. This is all done in an effort to transcend boundaries of race and religion in the village. For the Queen Mother of the Land, this is a very historic moment for her and her people. So, <laughs> Ke 
For the villagers as well, the peace movement initiative comes at the right time as lately there have been many churches in the village which in a way causes a division amongst people as it causes a lot of religious intolerance which may result in wars. The villagers believe that religions coming together to speak with one voice is a great initiative for a bright future. So, this means so much to me, means peace, uh, the world coming together, all the religious leaders and, and all, the, all the people coming together and, and becoming one. So to me, peace means, it, peace is for everyone. The Youth of International Peace Youth Group, the organizers of the event, also highlighted that the event is an initiative for the youth by the youth to be active agents in the cessation of wars as well as the attainment of world peace. So IPYG is an international peace youth group that's uniting youth all over the world. So basically we're working with youth in the pursuit of achieving peace. Uh, today was a commemoration of the World Peace Summit Memorial, peace. which was unveiled today. And this is to mark that this day is marked as the day where, um, a day of peace right here in Bafokeng. For the first time in history, the World Peace Monument has been put here in Royal Bafuken, South Africa as a symbol of the unity and peace of the people. This is all done prior to the World Peace Summit which will be held on Monday in South Africa. When we come back from the break, the second World Peace Summit begins. The Second World Peace Summit commemoration, which took place on the 30th to the 31st of March, started with different religious leaders from different religious backgrounds, as well as the youth from different backgrounds, coming together to sign an agreement, stating that they will work together for the attainment of world peace, despite their religious backgrounds or cultures. According to the South African Minister of Home Affairs, the youth in South Africa have a history of trying to be freedom fighters, but they end up being sacrificed. 
He stated that it is high time the youth refrain from being violent and convey the message of war peace. There can be no doubt that the children are the most affected by the ravages of war. Either when violence is visited upon them directly or their families, parents, relatives and elder siblings, they bear the brunt of an unnatural situation which modern and a more humane society must banish and ensure that it never exposes its children to, but rather must always protect them from. In our case in South Africa, we have witnessed children thrust into a position of freedom fighters, and accordingly many of them killed for daring to dream of and demand freedom for themselves and their fellow humans, sent to apartheid jails and their education disrupted, and thus denied the requisite skills with which to get sustainable employment and a decent living in later lives and pursue a life of happiness. This conference of youth in On Peace is a living testimony that conflict, violence and war are not the natural order of things. Different religious leaders also took the platform to explain what peace means to them in their different religions and what could be done for different religions to come together to work for peace. Um, Rastafari culture is a culture in nature. Our culture is in nature and our nature is in culture. So we live with our environment. We live within our environment. So peace within oneself is peace with one's environment. If there's no peace within, you will disturb everybody's peace without. But there cannot be peace if there's no social justice. Inequality is a problem because other religions in some countries are more equal than others. That's also, also problematic. Peace in, in Hindu term means Shanti. The Upanishad which is the conclusion of Vedas, scripture of Hinduism, says that peace can be attained only through the practice of Ahimsa. The practice of Ahimsa is the practice of non-violent actions. Ahimsa is a practice with the ultimate goal of reaching peace. Our beloved Madiba, and Mahatma Gandhi practiced the Ahimsa of pacifism during the freedom struggle. Gandhi also strongly believed that an eye for an eye only ends up making the whole world blind. The Hindu scripture states that not by action, not by progeny, not by wealth, but by sacrifice alone can immortal goal be achieved. Peace, of course, is inseparable from justice, which is the social aspect of communion. Communion, community. The justice of God we have is to strive for more complete justice in the world and for the disappearance of any sort of oppression. And it's time all of us to feel guilty when there is even one person suffering in this world. Even now as there are babies who die before to come to the world, the victims of the worst, but especially the, the pregnant women in Western Africa. And we believe that there is one Lord. Whether you call him Allah, whether you call him God, Chot, Eloi, Jehovah, Zimu, Mudimu, Om, Nkulu Nkulu, Dio, Dios, Yer, whatever it is, in any language, there is God. So we answer to him. But then, my religious belief, the Quran says, that those who believe, the Muslims, the Christians, the Jews, and whoever believes in the God and the last day and do good deeds, they shall have the reward from their Lord. 
and they shall have nothing to fear when they die. So that is it. An agreement stating that they will unite against war and promote war peace was also signed, not only by the religious leaders, but by the youth as well. We have just witnessed a very historical moment. Members of different religions came together and signed an agreement stating that they will come as one and call for peace despite their religious backgrounds. Chairman Man Hee Lee and Chairwoman Nam Hee Kim also continued to spread their message of peace stating that women as much as the youth and religious leaders should be at the forefront of the battle to win world peace. In order to stop many of the wars and conflicts in our world, the youth are the key tool. Up until now, the older generation has not been able to sustain the youth and to protect the youth and therefore, I believe that the youth must protect the youth. The, the organization of IWPG uh, originally was begun as, a, as an initiative for all mothers who could not tolerate their children being sacrificed and also their families being broken apart by wars. Within the short span of only a few years, right now we have 168 branches in 35 different countries. And as our parent body uh, provides us with the source, this very message and inspiration for peace, the women are using IWPG as a hub, an organization whereby all women can find common ground and work together as one. The World Peace Summit and all the events leading to it were characterized with joyful youth who were eager to see peace transpire in the world. The International Youth Peace Group as well as the International Peace Women's Group the organizers of the Peace Summit all have the desire to put all wars to a stop and improve world peace. Whether a country has wars or not, it can never truly claim to have peace as there will always be corruption, women abuse as well as killings. I am Mazei Makuluba. Thank you for joining us.